Here's like some imagined parabola that obeys the same set of um, geometric rules, this locus, that we started with over before, but I'll put it in a nice convenient spot. Okay. Well, my directrix here, I've got my focus here. Okay. Now, for any point on this parabola, I should be able to say, for instance, that point there, I should be able to say that the distance to the focus and the perpendicular distance to the directrix, they should be the same. Do you agree with that? Okay. Now, what that should mean is I ought to be able to construct, let's just, okay, think back to our previous topic, I ought to be able to construct a circle with its center at P, right? And the circumference should pass through, let's, let's see how I go. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I've done better. <laughs> there we go. Use your imagination. There we go. The circumference should pass through number one, the focus. Okay. And number two, it should be tangent to the directrix. Think about this. Think about this. It has to be this way because number one, all right, if its center is there, its radius over here must be in the, on the focus. Okay. But down here. If its radius is here and the radius is perpendicular to the tangent at the point of contact, right? Then your tangent to the directrix. The directrix will be that tangent. Does that make sense? Because it looks right angled here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to try and show this to you. Now, how am I going to get my um, how am I going to get my circle into this so I get the right set of points? Okay. Well, here's the first thing I'm going to do. Um, I want to pick a point somewhere on here on this line. And I want, so let me get rid of these guys because I don't need them. This guy, this guy, go away. <coughs> okay, so I have my line. And what I want is a perpendicular line. Okay, now think about this for a second. I'm imagining where I'm headed is that there is some point on this line such that the distance, I'm guessing it's about there, right? The distance here to here and here to here is the same, right? So in other words, it's the center of a circle. Does that make sense? Okay. So you're picturing, I have my tangent down here and I have my imaginary circle that's not quite there yet, right? But where is it going to be? Okay, so imagine that. Right? Now, not only do I have that, but I have this relationship with this point over here, okay? Now, if I construct a line through there and its midpoint, okay, have a look, have a look carefully, right? What I've made is, remember I said my imaginary circle is a center somewhere in here, somewhere in here. And these two points are both on the circumference of my circle. They're both on the circumference of my circle. Okay? So therefore, this line that I've just constructed, if there's a circle going around here, what kind of line is this that I've just made? It's a chord, very good, right? See the circle that's there. I can't draw it yet because I don't have a center to put it on yet. Okay? But it is there, this is actually what you're doing in circle geometry questions. You're like, this a picture I'm trying to see, but you have to use your imagination, right? So this is a chord. This is the um, this is the middle of that chord. So I've bisected the chord, right? Now I'm trying to find where the center of this circle is, right? I know this line goes through the center, okay? But if I have a chord, I know you used this property last week in the quiz, right? That the perpendicular bisector of this chord should also pass through the center, right? So let's put that perpendicular bisector in. There we go. One, two, bam. Okay. Do you see what's happening? Here's the chord. Here's the perpendicular bisector. It must pass through the center. Here's a tangent, and here's the radius, right? It also must pass through the center. So where they both collide, that should be the center of the circle. You agree? So let me, let me put that in. Okay, that's where I'm guessing. Now, that's not good enough for me, really. I want to see if this really works. So let's draw ourselves a circle. Bam, there we go. Okay. So what have I got? Let me get rid of my constructions for you. Okay. I don't need uh, this guy or this guy or this guy. In fact, I don't even need him. Okay, so what have I got now? Right. Where did I start from? I started from a point, the focus. And I've got this line down here, the directrix. And I can move this directrix wherever I like, right? I can, I'll put it back in a second, all these other points. Right? But this, um, this point here now, wherever I move it, it's going to be the same distance from the focus and the directrix. You see that? Wherever I put it, it's maintaining that distance. Okay? Just to make it really, really obvious, let's do this. So you can see the two distances involved. 
There's that one, and I'll make him red. And then there's this one, and I'll make him... Ooh, what's a nice visible colour? Blue! Green! Blue. Uh, if I make him blue, let's make this one down here dotted, because that's what I wanted. Uh, there we go. Dotted. Oh no, dash is, dash is probably better. Okay, there you go. Alright, you happy with that? Now, blue and red are the same. Those are those two distances, right? Now I can move this guy around. Let's uh, let's move him around, back and forth. You can see that happening, right? You can see the distances are maintained. They have to be maintained because of the circle we made, right? You see that? And this is okay. This is okay. But remember, I kept on saying you can either think of the locus as a set of points, like you guys standing out there, or I can say it's the part that's traced out by a single point that moves. A single point that moves. Okay. Now, I could trace, so let's have a look at this thing. Trace, okay. I'm going to move around this point and see the path that it traces out. Oh, that's not what I wanted to trace, I'm sorry. Let's undo that. Trace the right point, Mr. Wood. Okay, what I want is that guy. That's the path I want to trace out. Trace him. Okay, ready? Now, as I move, What's happening? Alright, these are the easy points. These are the points that, um, that people went to when they were like, I'm lazy, I, I want an easy spot that, to measure, right? All of these points, it's really easy to see that it's equidistant, right? But as you start to go a bit further away, it starts to curve upwards like this. You see that? Okay? And over here. Okay? Alright, now hold on a second. You can see, you can see this shape that's forming, right? I have a really fat parabola. This is exactly like the parabola we just did, like it's 1 over 12. Okay, 1 over 12. Let's try this again, but display. Don't trace that guy. And don't trace that one. Okay, what am I getting here? Put this guy in a bit closer. All right. Now, what's happening here, okay? I've brought everything much, much closer together, okay? So in order to have this distance preserved, as I go further out this way, my point's gonna have to get higher. Watch, okay, let's have a look. As I move, you can see it's getting steeper over there in order to preserve that blue and red together, okay? And this starts to get really hard to estimate when you're doing it in steps, doesn't it? But a computer doesn't have to estimate. He can do it exactly. Okay. So as you're getting that number, that see this distance in here, it's smaller. Okay. This whole shape is getting steeper. Do you see that? Okay. Let's do it one more time. Uh, let's move this guy even closer. Okay. All right. What are we gonna get? What do you predict? Let's give it a shot. There we go. That's pretty steep, isn't it? Right. That's what you normally think of. That's what you might normally draw when you just say y equals x squared. Okay. There's that shape being literally traced out. Okay, so, Jim, you mind spinning it back around? Can you get a straight line? Oh, wait, sorry. No, leave it, leave it, leave it. There was something I forgot to do. There was something I forgot to do. Um, okay, we um, we got, I got asked, I got asked the, uh, the troll question, which is like, oh, what if we have a line going a funny way? Okay, well, let's see what happens. Now, here's my, that guy. I don't want him to trace for a second. Okay, so what happens if my line, construction, construction, go away. I don't need these guys either. What happens if my line is off at some funny angle? Okay, so let's move, let's move this one over here. Yes. I'll, I'll delete him in a second. Okay. Alright, so here we go. Okay, so let's get rid of, oops, sorry. Alright, now. What are you expecting? Thank now, you. because this thing is only different from my original illustration by being off at an angle, right? I ought to expect my same shape really off at an angle. That's really okay. Good. So <laughs> if I move this guy around, yeah, no. Oh, I'm not tracing. Sorry. Let's 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 fix that. Shall I, we? Not uh, <laughs> I only want one. Yeah. Before yeah. It had Trace. Trace. Okay. Off I go, there he goes. He's pretty shallow, he's pretty shallow, but you Whoa. unmistakably get the same parabola shape. It just happens to be off at an oblique angle. 
Okay. Now it's worth mentioning, okay, because I provided an equation for you. I provided y equals negative three. That was our directrix. Okay. What could be an equation? It's not hard. That would give you an oblique angle like this. Just pick one. How about y equals x? That has that kind of gradient, right? You can still go through this whole process algebraically. There's nothing stopping you. What will happen? Right? This is actually a challenge I'm going to set to you, right? You're expecting something like this now that I've shown you this is what answer you're going to get. It's still a parabola, but it's not the kind of parabola you've been working with. I'm going to let you, if you're, if you're interested, just to pick a line, pick a point. Consciously, we know how to find each distance, right? And we know how to simplify algebraically. See what you 